The second event is the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb in the Valley of the Kings in Luxor. Since Napoleon's Egyptian expedition brought the ancient Egyptian civilization back to the spotlight on the world stage 100 years ago, there has been an enduring Egyptian craze in the European and American worlds. The discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb has once again detonated the world's fascination with Egypt. The mania for Egypt was prevalent in Egypt and the rest of the world outside Egypt. Elements of the pharaonic era of ancient Egypt, at that time as they are today, are a resounding business card in the whole world. In the movie The Aviator starring Leonardo DiCaprio, there is a scene depicting a Hollywood party in the 1920s, and the waitress in the film wears an Egyptian scarab headdress. The popularity of Egyptian elements in that era can be seen. Mukhtar took advantage of this trend. He was trying to gain worldwide attentions and supports for the Egyptian independence movement through artworks that blend modern European sculptural aesthetics with ancient Egyptian imagery. These works provided the people with a visual imagination of Egypt's existence as a new nation-state. After the Waft Party, a staunch supporter of Mukhtar, came to power, despite the criticism of the new government by its opponents, the National Assembly approved the use of the Egyptian government's public funds for Mukhtar's statue project, drawing a close for the private fundraising of the Egyptian Renaissance project. After eight years of fundraising and a series of unpredictable political turmoils, the Aswan granite sculpture was finally unveiled on Sunday, May 20, 1928, in Bab Hadid Square outside Cairo railway station. Thousands of Egyptians and foreign dignitaries attended the event. It is a pity that Mukhtar's most staunch supporter, the president of the National Assembly, Saad Zaglul, died in 1927 and was not able to attend the unveiling ceremony of the statue. Trains were the modern means of transport to the future at that time, and the statue, as a large-scale public art piece of modernism, was seen not only as a beacon of Egyptian nationalism and the spirit of the 1919 revolution. It was also the link between Egypt's past and present. The Egyptian Renaissance is the first granite statue erected in Cairo since the end of the pharaoh's era 2000 years ago, and he is also the first Egyptian statue to express a symbolic concept rather than a human figure. By personifying Egypt, Mukhtar united two Egyptian symbols, the gracious female figure representing maternal love, and the formidable Sphinx. The standing woman lifts the veil, symbolizing what Egypt expects to see awakening, rebirth and revival. Her right arm hangs over the shoulders of the Sphinx, a tribute to a history spanning 7,000 years. The Sphinx, on the other hand, looked straight ahead with a resolute look and firm eyes, and its powerful forearm propped up its body, representing strength and pride. It reminds people that Egypt, which once built a great ancient civilization, is revitalized again. Its base and statue are in the shape of a pyramid as a whole. Such a stable geometry is not only a tribute to the pyramid, but also symbolizes the courage and determination of the Egyptian people to solve all unknown problems in the future. This work embodies the complex historical relationship between art, artist, era, and politics. Although created in the early 20th century, it symbolizes a much older and grander ideology. Hard work pays off, and a better future. From an artistic point of view, the Egyptian Renaissance is a perfect combination of solemnity and gracefulness, humility and power, past and present. To this day, it still holds a pivotal place in the history of modern Egyptian art, just like its creator. The success of Egyptian Renaissance brought Mukhtar to fame in the Egyptian and French art circles, and his immense popularity enabled him to maintain studios in Cairo and Paris. During this period, he traveled frequently between Cairo and Paris, and in addition to his artistic creations, he participated in demonstrations for independence, calling for social and political reforms. He also wrote articles for critical newspapers aimed at raising the artistic appreciation of the intellectual elites, working to bring together revolutionary artists and intellectuals who advocated Egyptian independence.